So I wanted a sound system which I could trigger off of my transmitter. This should work with any transmitter. Um, so I won't go through the details of, of how the settings for the radio for now. What I'll just do is show you what I've done and then we'll, we'll go through how I achieved it. So what we've got here is I've got buttons C and F on my transmitter here, which I've just chosen the channels to send the signals from to the receiver. And if I go up, I have positive sounds on the F, like so. There's 10 sounds per, per um, trigger, and they're randomly played as well. Down is, down is supposed to be negative. And then I've just got short bursts of sounds on this trigger here that go up. And if I leave it up, they'll just cycle through randomly all the sounds. So you may hear one or two on top of each other. I'll try and trigger it quickly, though. But if I leave it up, it'll just, cycle, it'll just cycle through the sounds. And then I've also got a trigger for downwards on this switch as well. And what it, that does is just resets the board. So if the sound's going on too long and I don't want it to keep going just for whatever reason, if he's been interviewed by someone, they're talking to him, so it doesn't crash into them talking, I can cut the sound short. So I'll just trigger off a, hopefully a longer sound and just kill it by pushing down. And it reset. it's a reset on the board, um, but it's a nice little way of just quickly cutting the sound short. So my setup here, what I'm gonna do is eventually 3D print a nice box to keep all this in and build the speakers into it as well. I'll have stereo speakers built into the board eventually. Um, and what we've got here is the UBEC, which is very useful um, by Matex Systems. It's seven to 26 volts in, so I should be able to use it in any of my droids. Some run off 12 volts, others 24. So you just plug that in. I'm just running off a 12 volt battery just to bench test it at the moment. And then you've got two outputs. You've got a permanent five volt output, which currently I'm using for my receiver, but you probably won't need to power your receiver because hopefully that's powered in your droid already. Um, but what I will eventually do is use this five volt to power the soundboard. At the moment, I'm using this second output at five volts to power the soundboard, but this second output can be adjusted from five volts to 12 volts. Eventually, I will have the five volts to the soundboard, and then increase this to 12 volts and probably have an amplifier because at the moment the soundboard I'm using is only two watts, which probably isn't loud enough for R2. I'll, I'll try it in the droid first, but it'll probably need an amplifier, which you can get a small version um, by the same company. This is Adafruit. It's an MP3 Adafruit player. This is the speaker version. You can get a jack plug as well version um, if you just want to plug a normal speaker into it with a built-in amp. There's a two megabyte and a 16 megabyte version. I would recommend the 16 meg version. Two meg is a bit too small to put your sound files on. And then these nice little items here, these are by Model Radio Workshop, dual relay switches. And what it is here, you've got an input into these relays that come from your receiver and it just goes into any spare channel you've got. And it's just the one channel and that triggers the two uh, relays. So if I pick the right one here, there we go. So that's one of them and that's the other one. So it's all on one channel, but it's all on one channel and you've got the two um, outputs, which is very useful just from one channel. So I've got, I'm using the two channels on my receiver connected to the two relays, which have got a total of four triggers. So for the connections, on the relays here, you have to have a common ground, which I've taken off the board. The power supply goes into this side. You've got a V in, which is your voltage in, your positive, and then your ground. And then you've got various ground pins around the board. This one, I've just taken it off of this one, which goes into my common. And I've just looped it to all the commons here. So you've got a, a common on both of your relays, on both sides of the relays. And then you've got your normally open, which is the one we're using here, which is each trigger. So they are normally open, 
And when you flick your switch, that closes the connection between the common and whichever side relay you're using, which triggers the sound on the board. So the normally open connections go to your pins on the board. They're numbered from zero to nine. Plus you've got a reset pin just before the zero. So I am using that reset, which is this red wire here, which is the first pin, which goes to reset. Then you've got another normally open, which goes to pin zero. Then this cable here, this goes to pin one, and this one goes to pin two. So I'm using the four pins off of the two relays. So this is the close up of the uh, wiring that I've done for this board from the relay switches, just while I tell you a bit more about the soundboard. This Adafruit board is a bit like a drive. When you plug it into your PC or Mac through the USB connection, it just comes up like a drive. And what you can do is just upload the sound files. Follow the instructions, they're, they're easy enough to follow, but you have various options. You can have just one sound, you can have random sounds, you can have um, sounds in order, but it's just 10 sounds per um, pin, which you've always got to remember. But apart from that, um, yeah, it's, it's very simple to use. The switches on my radio aren't momentary, so they do hold up um, and just lock in position and will keep firing the sound without any gaps. I guess I could put in a gap at the end of the sound myself, just on the wave file, but I, I will probably just trigger them by hand, just flick them now and again. What you can do is you can get momentary switches. Some transmitters may already have momentary switches built into them. Unfortunately, this radio hasn't. You could replace these. I will include that in the thread as well as an option. And you can just take your radio apart, put momentary switches and then you can just touch them and it will just center itself automatically. So that's basically it. Um, give it a go. If you've got any questions, drop me a line and I'll, I'm sure I can help you. But it's just a useful way of getting the sound system from your transmitter. Thanks for watching.